Welcome, my gorgeous foodies. Welcome to Mala's Kitchen. I'm Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours. And of course, it's all a la Mala style. Today, I've got a fabulous recipe to complete. And so it's about time I get started. Shh, it's a secret. You can only find out if you watch. So keep watching. Hola foodies, this is your girl Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours and today we're getting ready to make a beautiful Japanese style Ogura cake and that's spelled O-G-U-R-A and of course I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly but hey I've tried my best. So let's go over some of the ingredients I have here set out on my beautiful countertop. We're gonna have four eggs that we'll be using in this cake. And of course, the four eggs, we're going to separate into these beautiful bowls that I have here. Yolks and whites, which we will take care of separately. We'll go through the rest of that later. In addition, we have here a quarter cup of olive oil. We'll be using some orange juice here today too. And today we'll be using a third of a cup of orange juice, also some sugar, and I'll be using also a third of a cup of sugar. We've got some salt, I'll be using kosher salt, and we'll be using a half of a teaspoon of kosher salt. And last, we have some all-purpose flour. Now, I went ahead and I measured already, so for the amount of flour, we'll be using a half of a cup of flour plus three tablespoons. So this is already pre-measured, a half a cup plus three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. So let's just get in there and take a nice, tight, beautiful shot of all of the ingredients that we have. Once again, it's a half a cup of all-purpose flour plus three tablespoons. We have over here a half of a teaspoon of kosher salt, a third of a cup of sugar, a third of a cup of orange juice, a quarter cup of olive oil, plus four eggs, which we will be separating yolks from the whites. So now let's get started. Time to get started with these eggs. So here we go. We're going to gently separate them. We're going to try to keep the whites together. And we're going to put the yolk separately. There we go. Let's get another one. Wow, would you believe this is an actual double yolked egg? Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, isn't that something? Wow. Well, we kind of just need one, so we're just gonna use one. Boop, we'll get rid of the other. again. There we go. We've got that. And we have our four yolks perfectly. Alrighty, so we have our yolks that are separated. As we can see, our yolks are over here. We have four. We had a double egg, so we used uh, two yolks from one. 
and uh, we've got all of our yolks in there for. And our whites are nice and separated over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out a third of a cup of sugar, add it to the whites, and we'll just move that off to the side. We'll deal with that in just a minute. So let's just go ahead and just measure out the sugar. So I'm using here my homemade vanilla sugar, obviously. And let me show you, I've got an old vanilla bean pot in there, as you can see. This little thing that looks like a stick, that's beautiful flavoring right in there. So I'm gonna keep that there. So let's just get a third of a cup. There we go. Third of a cup, nice and level. Add that in there. And we're going to set it off to the side. Alrighty, so now to our egg yolks, we're going to start with our kosher salt. And remember I said a half of a teaspoon of kosher salt. So in the salt goes, we're gonna add here or quarter cup of olive oil. So in our oil goes, beautiful, get that all in because baking is kind of a bit of a science there. Get that out of the way, get this out of the way. Then we're gonna go with a third of a cup measurement for our orange juice. Give this a little shake right here. And let's get ready to pour. Keep that nice and stable. So we've got our third, third of a cup of orange juice. Here we go, nice at the top. And our orange juice goes. So now we're going to get ready to whisk it all together. So I've got my handy dandy trusty whisk here. And off we go. So this is all nicely whisked up over here. Now we're going to get ready to sift our flour in. So here we go, get that nice and clean. Put our little sifter up on top. Dump our flour in. Get my little spatula here. Sift this all through. Make sure everything is nice and fine. There we go. Yep, looking good. Now we're going to continue to whisk. There we go. Get everything nicely incorporated. This is looking gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous in here. Beautiful. So here we've got everything all mixed. So now I'm gonna show you what else I'm going to do because we're gonna now pour this again through the sifter to make sure we have a beautiful, smooth bather. Okay, so here we go. Get our batter all in. I'm just going to smooth this through right here just like that make sure we have a nice and smooth batter Go and we have it. 
get all that goodness off of the bottom of this. We're going to get ready to get started on our egg whites. Time to get started on these egg whites. I've got my handy dandy little uh, electric mixer here or whisk. So let's get started. Now in the egg whites I've already added the sugar. So I'm going to start on my lowest setting which is a one and then I'll slowly bump up because we need nice stiff peaks. <laughs> So let's take a look. Look how beautiful our egg whites look. I'm going to start incorporating this into our cake batter. So I'm going to start with one scoop just to get that in. And we're tempering this. So we want this to accept the rest of our egg whites without collapsing. So we have a beautiful, nice, and light batter. So want to nicely incorporate this well. There we go. Our batter is looking beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to continue the process. There we go. I'm going to just lift and incorporate just this way. So our batter is nice and light. Some more of that egg white. Continue the same process of folding this beautiful batter together. And I just lift and pull over this way. Now let's get the rest of this in. Want to make sure we get all of that beautiful egg white. Don't want to lose anything. Yep, I think we got that. Lift and fold. Lift and fold. And that's our beautiful process here. Batter smells amazing, by the way. Nice and citrusy. Can't wait for you guys to see the end product. So I'm going to get this poured into my prepared pan that I've already sprayed. I've actually used a spray that already has a butter in it and flour. And we're going to be baking this in a hot water bath. So I've already got my oven on at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to put this in there in a hot water bag for about a half hour or so. Then I'm going to lower the temperature after a half hour to about 260 degrees Fahrenheit and let it go. Continue baking for another half hour. So let's continue. And I'm going to pour this batter into my pan. So I've got my two bun pans that I've prepared. So let's see, we're going to pour this half batter in. Actually, maybe we'll just be using one pan after all. I thought maybe we could use two, but I guess not. So we're going to get all of this in here. Scrape that batter down beautifully. 
everything out of the bowl. It's beautiful. And next we're off to get this into a hot water bath and in the oven. Alrighty, so I've placed um, my cake pan. I'm using a bundt pan inside of another pan. And then I'm gonna push that off to the side. I've got a cup here of some hot water. And I'm going to gently pour some in here, trying to make sure that nothing gets into my batter. So I'm just gonna go up Probably a little shy of a half of an inch on the sides of my pan. I think that's about it. Yep. Now we're ready for the oven. And here we go. Our cake is in the oven. And as you can see, it's set at 300 degrees. Alrighty, so we're set at 300 degrees. It's now about three o'clock. So we're gonna bake for 30 minutes at 300 degrees and I'm gonna come back, lower the temperature to 260 degrees Fahrenheit and go for another half hour. So we'll see you guys back then. So our Oragora cake is hot out the oven. Puppy looks beautiful. It's nice and springy to the touch. Beautiful. So we're going to let her cool for just a bit. Alrighty, so our Japanese Ogura cake is all done. As you can see, it's nicely cooled. And I've got it here on a lovely tray. So now all I'm going to do is dust this little bit of powdered sugar and we shall call it a day. And there you go. Look how beautiful that looks. And now for the moment of truth. Let's see what happens when we cut into this baby. I'm actually gonna cut it right in the middle of a heart, just like that. I'm gonna cut it down just like this. Now, Let's see what happens as we lift up. Oh, baby, look at how gorgeous this looks. Wow, doesn't get more perfect than that. Take a look. Beautiful, spongy, springy, and how beautiful, wow. Oh baby, gotta say I am super duper happy with this. There you have it. Japanese style Ogura cake a la mala style. Wow. So many folks ask what's the difference between an Ogura cake and a chiffon cake or retro sponge cake? So basically an agora cake is a much lighter version of the popular Japanese soft cheesecake, but it's also light and airy at the same time, just like a chiffon or rather a sponge cake. Now the agora cake texture is probably more of like a crossbreed, you know, between a steam cake and a chiffon cake. The only difference lies in the fact that the agora cake is made using a steam bath or rather fancy name Au Bain Marie, which is a method we use for Japanese styled uh, light cheesecakes or any other types of cheesecakes using a hot water bath. Now I'm super excited because I have my gorgeous nieces Mia and Aharia to do the taste test. Hi guys, my name is Aria and my name is Mia. And today we're going to make a cheesecake using the Japanese cake. Okay, let's try. How's it taste, girls? Awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, what do you like about it? 
That tastes like a heart and tastes amazing. Wow, what flavor is it? Mm. It must be so good you can't describe it. <laughs> Say bye. 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 And this is from whose kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to Auntie Molly's YouTube channel. I'm Molly Style. <laughs> and there you go, folks. You heard from the pros themselves, Mia and Aria, and they love Auntie Molly's agura cake and there you have it i hope you guys try this recipe and try it very soon it's super light it's delicious and it is so worth it and super easy to do fun fact agura happens to be a japanese last name and also means red beans in mandarin imagine that there are also other versions of this agura cake such as i believe malaysian but for the purposes of this video, this is specifically the Japanese style. All right, was that as much fun for you as it was for me? I sure hope so. That was a fabulous recipe and I sure hope you try it. Don't forget guys, I hope you liked this video and if you did, feel free to look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Give us a like, a follow, and a share. Mwah.